There are several downsides to a health savings account, so watch out before you invest into this account. Hello, I am Colin and this is Harness Money. And there are a few downsides that we need to discuss about a health savings account. I am a huge proponent of the HSA for most individuals to help them build wealth and build their financial foundation because the HSA is a great way to prepare for the future, especially preparing for your medical future. Medicine is only getting more expensive. Technology is advancing and there's more technology in medicine than ever before, but that comes with a cost. So I am fully under the impression that as the years go by and medicine advances decade after decade, that it's going to be more expensive and we're going to need money to cover the difference between what Medicare is going to pay and retirement and what medicine is actually going to cost decades from now. So it is a good idea to have a health savings account. But there are some downsides that you need to know because you don't want to get caught off guard and have to pay a penalty. Now, the reason an HSA is not for everyone is because in order to have this savings account, this type of account, you have to be enrolled in a high deductible health care plan. So you must have health insurance and you must have a high deductible plan, which means if you go to the doctor, you may be required to pay up to, let's say $4,000 or $5,000 out of pocket before your insurance really kicks in and takes over the primary costs of your care. So it's really putting the burden on the patient to pay for more of their healthcare rather than the insurance company. So the other flip side of that is you may want to have a lower deductible. If you're going to the doctor more often, you're doing more visits to a healthcare professional, or let's just say one particular year, something happens. Like last year, I had to have an appendectomy. So I had to pay my full deductible because that was it was a full-blown surgery that I had to go for and it would and I had to stay in the hospital several days for them to do it. So I was paying a lot out of pocket. You may choose to go with a lower deductible plan so that more of the you pay more monthly to be in to sign up for your health insurance plan, but that insurance plan covers more of the costs of your care based on your deductible. So if you're going to the doctor more often, it's probably better to have a PMO, but do your homework. Look at your own medical history and your own medical needs and decide which healthcare plan is for you before you look into the HSA. Now, I have been doing a an HSA for several years. If you can start early, if you know or if you think that you're going to be healthy, for a few years, maybe one or two years, that means you can build up a nest egg of money into your HSA, and then that can really cover your deductible. So I always keep enough cash in my HSA to cover any type of deductible that I am required to pay if I ever have to go to the hospital. So if you start early, you can really benefit from putting money into this account and then it won't be as much of a burden versus if you sign up today for an, a high deductible healthcare plan and then tomorrow you get into a big accident or something or need a big medical procedure, you're going to be required to come out of your pocket and pay for that. So there's a lot of things to think about when you are enrolling into this account as well as um, if you have a family. If you have a family, 38, uh, you can actually do a family plan. You can double the amount that you're allowed to put into an HSA if you are on a family plan, but you have to enroll everybody onto that high deductible uh, plan. So 
It's just something to think about as well as you can change. You at any point throughout the year, you can decide, you know what, I'm going to stop. I don't want to do the high deductible plan anymore. I'm going to switch over to a PMO, but that means you are not allowed to contribute anymore to your, as long as you're on that PMO, you're not allowed to be putting money into an HSA. So you can go back and forth. So maybe one year you decide I'm going to be on the HSA, then the next year you're going to be on the uh, PMO. It's just up to you based on your needs. Now, we also need to talk about the funds that are going into this account. All of the funds, another, the other downside to the HSA is that all of the funds you're putting into this account should specifically be for healthcare, for qualified medical expenses. The government outlines a category of products as medical expenses, and you must spend money on those particular items or services. If you're going in for a, uh, a surgery that is considered medical, if you're going buying a hotel room for to go for a surgery, that's kind of in the gray area because a hotel room is not necessarily medical, but if you're doing it for a medical procedure, then that could qualify as being used for medicine. But you really want to get clear about what you are spending the money on. If you're spending it on groceries or gas or um, traveling, that's not allowed. You must spend it specifically for healthcare. So it's just knowing, you just have to know that you're locking a little bit of money away every year for medicine or for your future medical expenses rather than being able to spend that on whatever you want. Now, there is a loophole, which is that once you reach the age of 65, so essentially when you retire, you are allowed to withdraw any money from your HSA penalty free. So you don't have to pay the penalty if you are, if you do need the money, but that is considered income. Anything you withdraw from your account after 65 is considered regular income if you don't spend it on medical expenses. So you just have to keep that in mind and really plan out how you are going to withdraw this money. So um, it may just be more beneficial to put this money into a stock brokerage account or a bank savings account if you think that you're going to be fine with your health care or if you think Medicare is going to take care of everything or you have another medical plan for your future, you don't need this account. It may be better to allocate this money to a place that is e more easily accessible because when I put money into this account, I'm essentially, in my mind, locking that money away till I really need it, till I have a medical emergency of some kind that I cannot cover on my own. I think of this account as really a supplement for retirement. When I am truly in my 60s, 70s, 80s, and I am retiring, then this money will help me supplement whatever Medicare does not provide. So I'm putting money into this account for decades. And the other item is that you can invest this money. Anything that you put into your HSA can be invested but you really have to look at your providers. So another downside is that there, there are only a select number of HSA providers. It's not like a bank account where you have a thousand to choose from. No, you only have a handful of HSA providers that you have to uh, select from, and you really have to look into the fees that each one charges and the features that they offer because not all of them allow you to invest in the stock market or they allow you to only invest in a select number of funds and they can have higher fees and those fees can go up based on how much money you have in your account. So really do your homework about who is providing your services and how much you are going to pay for them. So these are just all the downsides to keep in mind with the HSA, but I still believe it is a great account to set you up with a 
financial foundation and to really help build your wealth over time. So thank you for watching this video. I am Colin and remember, make good money choices. Till next time.